It is the first weekend of October and I am nowhere else other than Canada's Wonderland for Halloween haunts. My favorite thing they do here every year is the insane mazes through the mountain, through the dark back areas that you don't usually see. And this year they are back open. I'm super excited to check out every single one of those and show them to you guys and give you guys reviews on the best ones, which ones you gotta check out, and everything new here at Halloween Haunts in 2022. So let's head in, get some insane night rides, and see what this place has to offer. Haunt opens up every night at 7 p.m., but they actually open up the gates around 6.30 p.m. so you can come in, have some time in the scare zone at the front, and then actually come to the rides for seven o'clock. So right now you can see Leviathan basically has no line. So once it gets dark, we're gonna spend that time going through the houses and the scare zones. But for now, while it's light out, we might as well get a bunch of rides with barely any lines on the roller coasters. We probably waited a total of 10 minutes at most for Leviathan, which is great. And now we're headed into the first maze of the night, which is the crypt. So a good plan of action when you come to haunt is go to Leviathan first, get that ride, and then come right beside, right off the exit, straight into the crypt. So let's see how this maze is. It's pretty cool. You actually get to walk under Leviathan to get to the crypt. The crypt was good. The only part that was pretty disappointing was they cut the second maze that used to be connected to it. Once you went through the crypt, there used to be a following maze called the Sci-Fi House, and this year that was just nowhere in sight, so too bad they didn't bring it back. You may notice around the park, people are wearing these yellow, really aggressive, blinking looking necklaces, and they're actually called Nobu necklaces. And what you can do is you can purchase one of those for $15.99 at most gift shops or these little kiosks around the park, and what that'll essentially do is tell any of the monsters in the scare zones not to scare you. So if you're taking your kid, you're going with your friends, and you don't actually want to be attacked or well not attacked they're not allowed to touch you but scared by any of the monsters this $15 Nobu necklace might be a good purchase for you we're now headed into Cornstalkers and Spirit Manor and I don't know what Spirit Manor is this year but Cornstalkers has been my favorite for a long long time and you go through actually a cornfield and there's a bunch of scarecrows it's really scary so let's check it out Spirit Manor was so much scarier than I remember it. There were so many monsters inside. It flagged like there was one around every turn. Essentially what it is, is you are in a haunted manor or a basically old school style haunted house. And there was just so many scary moments. There was these really scary lighting effects too. Everything was just so well done in this house. It was really freaking scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh my god, mirror selfie guy gone. I went. It's calm. After that, we did corn stalkers, which was not as scary as I remembered, even though the setting through the cornfield in the back of Whitewater Canyon was pretty cool. It is currently only 8.06 p.m. and I believe we've already done three mazes, four rides including Yukon and Leviathan which are two of the biggest ones and it's only 8 o'clock so we still have tons of time and there's really no one here tonight. We're just rolling through everything, barely any lines. The longest we waited it was around 10 minutes for Leviathan and everything since then has just been easy flowing, basically walk on. So super great to know that this weekend at Haunt is just dead. I already explained and we went through how some of the mazes work but there are other parts of the park called scare zones which you can see section on the Halloween haunt specific map but pretty much what those are are massive zones of the park well they're not that big but certain zones of the park where they're super themed and decorated and people actually come up to you as scare actors and try to scare you and chase you around and do crazy things so if you want to not be scared either get a nobu and walk through them or just don't go to these scare zones at all that was probably the greatest ride on the mighty Canadian Mindbuster I have ever got. It was running so smooth, like beyond smooth, I didn't even know it was a wooden coaster. Usually this ride absolutely sucks, and it was just pitch black through the whole course because the water park is closed. Man, definitely recommend the uh, mighty Canadian Mindbuster at Haunt. That was nuts. This was also my first time seeing the brand new Lazy Bear Lodge restaurant which just opened and when you were standing in front of this thing it looks absolutely massive. It's just this one huge wooden cottage structure and they did an amazing job on it. I've been following the construction on this since they literally put in the first couple beams and wow it came out so amazing. I'm excited to try the food out soon. the ruins and pandemonium connected mazes and oh my god those were by far the best two so far the pandemonium one came second and that was nothing special but the ruins ones we're gonna wait for them to scream on vortex in one second 
There we go. But the ruins were so beyond well done. The only negative thing I have to say about that was that they let everyone in at once. So there was a really big mob of people actually walking through the maze. Hence, there wasn't really that many scare moments. There was a ton of actors in there and the set design was absolutely nuts and really, really cool. But there was just way too many people to get a proper scare experience. I hope that at nights going forward, they regulate the amount of people going through, even if that does mean you have to wait in line a little bit longer to get it. The only thing I'm pretty disappointed in, which we didn't get to check out was, are any of the new shows for this year. I'll attach a screenshot on screen right now from the Wonderland website with all of the new shows. I just really didn't line up my timing right to get to catch any of these. I definitely recommend though you do check out some while you're at Haunt because I've heard really buzzing reviews on them. And with that, our night at Halloween Haunt is going to come to an end. We're able to do everything in really just over two hours, which I find pretty amazing. There really was no lines. Everything was a walk-on. And now it's around 9, 9.30, and things are starting to get busier. So make sure if you do have that opportunity to, you come around 6.30 to 7 and get everything in right at the beginning. And to when that sunset happens and it starts getting dark. So I definitely recommend that you come check out Hannah's Wonderland Halloween Haunt this year. Click the iCard on screen right now for a playlist of all my other Halloween haunt videos from past years. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.